Hey y'all, today we're going to be talking about some of the things that I do to improve my Spanish. As many of you know, I live in Mexico City. Uh, this is my second Latin American country that I've lived in. I've also lived in Honduras and I've been on a journey to hopefully become fluent in Spanish. So I thought I'd share with y'all some of the things that I'm doing that I think have helped improve my Spanish. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Adelia, also known as Picky Girl Travels the World. Uh, I help black women get their money together so that they can live life on their terms, be that traveling, be that moving abroad, be that doing whatever the hell they want. So uh, welcome, thank you for joining today. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, turn on notifications so that you will be notified the next time I upload a new video. Okay, so let's get to it. What are some of the things that I do to help improve my Spanish? The first one is super easy. I listen to Spanish language music so easy to do on YouTube. If there is a genre of music you like, you know, like I didn't know, I didn't know five years ago, I didn't know what the hell reggaeton was. However, <laughs> over the last five years, I've become quite a fan. Uh, listening to music uh, in Spanish has helped me pick up vocabulary terms and it has also helped me with uh, pronunciation and picking up some slang. Uh, a lot of the artists I listen to are not Mexican. You know, I live in Mexico, so knowing Mexican Spanish would be really, really helpful. So I am picking up some phrasing that isn't Mexican, but you know, it's not the end of the world. The second thing I did was to change the language setting on my Google account. So that would impact email, uh, you know, photos, all of the different Google products, as well as Facebook and on my cell phone. I'm not gonna lie to you, that is, <laughs> that's a really intimidating thing because like I thought I knew Spanish and then I changed the language on Gmail and I was like, what does this mean? <laughs> uh, you know, like, so I've learned, you know, what are the verbs for download, loading, save, you know, like I've picked up that vocabulary because I had to, because I needed to understand what the hell my Gmail was telling me. I did the same thing in Facebook as well. Um, the downside, you know how Facebook provides you translations of posts in other languages? Well, it had, it stopped providing me translations of Spanish comments and Spanish posts because my language was Spanish. However, I definitely learned some new vocabulary. Same thing with my cell phone. The third thing that I did or that I am still doing, I'm still doing all of these to improve my Spanish is Netflix. I watch a lot of Spanish language stuff. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I have a preference for things that are set in Mexico City uh, because I, I like to see the city uh, and I like to be able to look at landmarks and things like that in the show and be like, oh yeah, I've been there, I've done that thing. Um, now, there's a couple of ways you can use uh, Netflix to improve your Spanish. You can watch Spanish language media. Uh, you can literally put in Spanish language, you can put in Mexico in the search, you can put in, you know, if you're in Colombia, whatever, and they will find things that were created there or that's in the language. Um, I also turn on closed captioning in Spanish. Doesn't matter if I'm watching something in English or if I'm watching something in Spanish, I have Spanish closed captioning. And one day, I will be bold enough to take things that are in English and turn on the Spanish language. I'm not there yet. Right now, I'm at subtitles. So even, like I said, even if it's something in English, uh, I found that really helpful for picking up vocabulary, especially if it's something that, you know, you watch a lot of and they repeat certain words, it's easy to pick it up that way. Some of the shows that I really like, um, I've been watching Made in Mexico, which is kind of like a 
you know, it's a reality show with rich people, but it's set in Mexico City. Um, so I've been watching that. It's in Spanish, although they slip a little English in every now, and I watch it with Spanish subtitles so that I can actually, you know, like I'm hearing the words, but sometimes I can't make out distinct words. These subtitles help with that. Uh, I also watch Nailed It Mexico. I'm pretty sure y'all are familiar with that uh, Netflix show, Nailed It. It's like a baking show where people try and make like Pinterest style cakes and cookies and all of that. Well, there's a Mexico version of it and everything is in Spanish. It's hilarious. Uh, as somebody who doesn't cook, it's uh, refreshing to watch other people who can't cook well uh, make an attempt at it. The first show I actually started watching on Netflix uh, was La Reina del Sur. If you are familiar with the show Queen of the South, La Reina del Sur was the original that they used and based Queen of the South on. It again is set in Mexico. Um, it's a little cheesy, but again, I'm just trying to pick up pronunciation. I'm trying to pick up vocabulary. It's good for that. It's fun. I I am a big like supernatural, the magicians, you know, I like those kind of shows. So I had started watching actually completely by accident. I knew it was set in Mexico, Diableros. I knew it was set in Mexico, but I didn't know it was in Spanish originally because when I watched it on Netflix, it was dubbed in English but more recently I've started watching it in the original Spanish. Uh, and so I'm, I'm learning. And again, that's said in Mexico City, so it's very cool to see the different places they go. Now, food. That's probably, when I first moved to Mexico from Honduras, I had grocery store Spanish. Like I knew words that were related to food. So Taco Chronicles and Street Food Latin America, uh, what could be better than a show about tacos and street food? Most of street food Latin America is in Spanish, of course, except the Brazil episode. But I listened to it in Portuguese, but still had the Spanish subtitles. More recently, I have started watching kids movies, like animated movies. Um, sometimes I feel like they speak more slowly and it's easier for me to pick up, to, to decipher what they're saying. Uh, Chico's Journey, X-I-C-O. Uh, it's about a Mexican hairless dog and his human companions and their adventures. Um, so yeah, Netflix, I think has helped definitely with kind of like picking up terms that like aren't in my textbook. And then another thing I do is I try to read aloud in Spanish, whether I am reading, like you can find lyrics videos on YouTube. So for a song in Spanish, um, I will find a lyric version of that video and I will try and read that aloud. I read uh, news stories that are in Spanish. And then the final thing that I have done is I try to live in neighborhoods where there aren't too many foreigners, therefore there aren't going to be a lot of people who speak English. And so their instinct when I go into a store, I go into a restaurant, is to speak to me in Spanish. They don't speak to me in English. So there you have it. Those are some of the simple things that I kind of do like on a day-to-day -day basis that are hopefully going to get me to be so that I'm fluent in Spanish, hopefully. Um, thanks for watching. If you are considering moving abroad, um, there is a link in the description as well as a link up here for you to get my move abroad checklist. Uh, it goes through all of the things you need to do before you move abroad and during the move abroad process. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the video or to the channel, go ahead and do that and I'll catch y'all next time.